Hello, everybody. This is Ernest Gonzalez. I'm with the EdTech and Design Office of 21st Century Learning with SAISD. We're here to talk to you today about how to get to Canvas and explore Canvas a little bit. So the first thing I've done is I've opened up Google Chrome to get to the internet. And the website that I've typed in is link.saisd.net. This website that you see here is called ClassLink. And from your ClassLink page, you have access to all of your resources, textbooks, Canvas, BrainPop, and more. Now your username and password will come from your teacher, so be sure to get that from them. If you don't have your username, you can call the school start hotline to try to get that information as well. Notice you can also sign in using Q these uh, QR codes that are called quick cards. These are really great for younger students that may have trouble remembering their username and password. Once you've signed into ClassLink from here, what you're going to see again is all of your resources that you have available to you to use. There's a lot of good resources in there, so check them out. Today we're going to be looking at Canvas. So Canvas is where all of your schoolwork from your teachers and communication is going to be happening. It's this red icon that you see here. So right now I've clicked on Canvas to open up my dashboard. This is the Canvas dashboard. All of the courses that you are going to be a part of will exist here. And so if you ever need to get to the screen again, you just have to click Dashboard and to be able to see all of your courses. Just below Dashboard is the word Courses. This is another view to let you see all of the different courses that you belong to. This is just another way to be able to click on the course that you want to go into. As far as communication goes, you definitely want to explore the calendar. The calendar is going to be a place that lists out different events and assignments and even ways for you to book uh, tutoring time with your teacher or to even uh, possibly find your Zoom links in here if your teachers are posting these inside of your calendar. Each of the different courses that you belong to has a separate calendar that can be turned on or off. So I'm turning this back on. Notice you also have the inbox here, which is a way for you to check any email messages that may have been sent to you. You also have the ability to write emails. So I'm going to select my eighth grade class. And over here on two, I'm going to select the teacher. And I put in a subject. And right down here is where I can type out the message. Notice there is a way to attach documents and to also record a video to go along with that message. Right now, I'd like to go into one of my courses. I'm going to click on course and go into eighth grade science. Once you do, this is what one of your courses may look like. This is the template for pre-K, kinder, first and second grade. Noticed on the left hand side over here, you have a menu that your teacher may customize. In this case, we have home, announcements, modules, grades, and syllabus turned on. Let's take a look at announcements. Announcements are kind of like an email. A teacher can send out an, an announcement inside of each course, whereas the inbox can affect all your different courses. So this particular announcement was recorded by the teacher, and it appears to be a video. So we'll click play here. Hey, everybody. This is Mr. Gonzalez. Welcome to class. All right. So be sure to check your announcements and your inbox daily. Let's take a look at the home page again. This course menu, by the way, lets me get to various places within this course. So let's scroll down. Notice we have Learn, Help, Parents, and Resources. Let's take a look at Learn, which actually leads to an area called Modules. That's, let's take a look at the Module View. So in the Module View, this is where your teachers are going to be posting a variety of learning materials. Here's an example of a page. In this page, this may include videos, images, text, 
some resources and directions information. For example, this one says you'll be using this resource today. On pages such as this, you have Immersive Reader, which is a really fantastic tool that can help you with reading the text aloud. Lesson intro, page example. And do other things such as turning on the ability to translate. Many different languages are in here. So if you are more familiar or need some support with Spanish, you can translate by word. Notice I can click page. Not only does it show up in English and in Spanish that I can listen to, Página. it also shows me a picture dictionary to help me understand the word a little bit better. I can also choose to have the whole, entire page changed into Spanish. Let's listen. Introducción a la lección. Ejemplo de página. Just click the back arrow to get back out. And that is how you can use Immersive Reader on any page that is inside of your modules. In addition to pages, you will also have assignments and quizzes and links as other types of resources that can be put into a module. Let's take a look at this assignment here called Dogs and Cats. This is going to be an example of a text assignment. So the key thing here is that students press submit in order to be able to do their work. In this case, it's a question, a simple question, who is better? Uh, pets, dogs or cats. So I have a text box here and I can say dogs are better because dot, 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 and put the rest of my answer in there. This here is called the rich content editor. Anytime your child has access to this, they can also add in links, they can add in images, they can even use this to record. Now this feature works a little bit different on an iPad. The record does not work from here. Just keep that in mind if you're using an iPad, okay? But main thing is I can type in my text, click Submit. When I click Submit, Canvas is gonna let me know that this was submitted September 2nd at 1115 a.m. It's giving me the date exactly right there. Let's go see some other types of assignments. This pet portrait is called, uh, is an actual file upload example. So let's see what this one looks like here. Again, press submit. And once I do, I have the option to turn in my assignment. In this assignment, the, the teacher is asking us to draw a picture of our real pet or our imaginary pet. So I can do that on paper. And then what I would do is I could click choose file because maybe I take a picture of it, save it to my computer, choose file. And once I do that, then I can click on a picture to turn in. And let's go with just this picture here. It's the only picture I have on my computer right now. So I have that picture and I can press submit to turn in that picture. Notice you can still pull images from your Google Drive. So that's another way that you can do it. You can take a picture, save it to Google, and then grab the picture from your Google Drive. Let's see some other examples here. This is an example of Google. Your, your teachers may create assignments for you using Google. So in this example, our teacher has given us our own copy of a Google Slides. So here we can see that the Google file has loaded it is a little bit small on my screen, but I can click the name of the file up here in blue, Dogs and Cats, to click it and have it open up in its own tab, a little bit bigger, and now it'll be easier for me to do my work. Now the great thing about working in Google is that everything that I do, I can go ahead and make those changes, and I don't have to worry about saving because Google automatically saves everything that I do. When I'm finished with my work, dragging in the words into where they belong, I can just close out this tab. And you can see that the work is updated. But the key thing is that I'm going to press submit. And I have to press submit to be able to turn my work back into my teacher. So that work has been turned in. Let me go back into my modules and see what else I have to do for part of this lesson. 
it looks as though the last thing that's in this module is a cats and dogs quiz. So I'm going to click that now. Now I've already taken this quiz, but I do want you to know that you have multiple choice questions. You have true or false questions. You can have a variety of different types that so you can have fill in the blanks. Um, and one of the fantastic things about these quizzes is that when you're finished, your teacher can automatically give you feedback to let you know your grade, to let you know what you got correct, what you might have missed, and give you more feedback beyond that. Let me go back into modules. So as you can see, there's quite a bit that can be done from inside of Canvas. Just again, remember, the dashboard gives you a view of all of your courses. Your dashboard can be adjusted to look differently. You can do that from the settings here in the top. You can display it as cards. Some of you may see it as a list. Some of you may see this as recent activity. I'm used to the card view, so I like seeing this. At the bottom of each course card, there is a little uh, icon to let you know if maybe there's some announcements or assignments due. Click into a course to see. Use this menu to get around. Remember, modules is where all of your learning exists. Don't forget to check your calendar and inbox as your main tools for helping you communicate with your teacher and know what's happening in your class. And don't forget, if you ever get stuck on anything and you need some extra help, you can click the help icon and look through the Canvas guides. There are Canvas guides for students and for parents that help you learn everything you need to know about Canvas.